Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shalom. 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 Thank you once again. It's another wonderful day. A day that the Lord has made. We'll be looking at stewardship. And we are looking at the principles or the foundations of stewardship. Today, I'll be starting with the principles or the foundations. So, number one, you'll be looking at accountability. Before I do that, let me do some small reading before I start with the accountability. Now, our main verse or main quotation for this teachings is Genesis chapter 1 and then Matthew chapter 25. Genesis chapter In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, God created humankind in his image and gives them dominion or give us dominion over the creations of the earth. This dominion, however, is less about domination and more about a commission to care for and cultivate the world responsibly. The Hebrew word for dominate is radash. This context suggests wise and benevolent rule. Moving to Genesis 2 verse 15, Humanity's stewardship rule is further emphasized. The verse reads, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The term translated as work and take care implies stewardship. That is maintaining and protecting the garden. Beyond Genesis, stewardship extends to numerous instances where management of resources and care for the valuables and are emphasized. In the parable of the talents, Jesus teaches about the responsibility to wisely manage and invest what is entrusted to us by God, suggesting that Stewardship has a moral and spiritual dimensions. So this is the commentary I'll be making on the foundations or the principles of stewardship. So I'm going to talk about the principles of stewardship in scriptures. The first principle of stewardship. Now, remember that from all the commentaries, from introduction to this current commentary I made, it is pointing to the fact that we are all managers. So to be a good manager, you need to understand these principles of management from God's perspective or from the biblical perspective. The first principle is accountability. Accountability. I will be reading Matthew 25 verse 19 to 30. Now, stewardship involves accountability for one's action. Accountability for one's action. The, the parable of the talent underscores the idea that individuals have to account for how they have managed God's resources. Now, let me buttress or let me emphasize this by reading the verse being shown on your screen. Matthew 25. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Matthew 25, verse 19. 25, verse 19. 19 to 30. After a long time, the master returned from his trip and called to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver 
came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master of was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest. And I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I would have gotten more interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are giving, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into utter darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of feet. So this is the illustration Jesus Christ gave on accountability. We see that we are giving talents, we are giving endowment, we are giving gifts, we are giving purposes. Now, if you have one and you are able to work with it, God is going to multiply it for you. If you have one, two, three, it doesn't matter the number of giftings or the endowments you have. If you don't work with it, whatever you have will be taken from you. So, at the latter part or at the judgment day, which is going to be a crucial day, the time of reality, Jesus' illustration tells us that the one who didn't work with the talent was thrown into utter darkness. Or was thrown into hellfire. So we are all stewards. And as stewards, every individual who hears my voice this moment, you should be aware, you should be quickened from this moment that I, as an individual, I, as a God kind of being, being created in the image and the likeness of God. I have some specific talents or some specific giftings that I've been given. And there comes a day or a time where I'm going to be accountable. So upon getting to realize all these things, you need to set up. You need to set up a um, a system or you need to prioritize your things in such a way that you will live a purposeful life a life that will end you a reward just like the gentleman in the illustration who was giving five he had additional five and then he was giving more just like the gentleman who was giving two he had additional two and was giving more these are the kind of people we need to be. Whether you believe in the gospel or you don't believe in the gospel, today is the hour of repentance. You need to turn yourself at 360 degrees, turn around, where you need to 
acknowledge the words of Lord Jesus. You need to set up. You need to re-strategize your things. You don't just need to live any kind of life. Don't live a haphazard life, but then live a purposeful life. A life that will be like a, a pleasant aroma to the Lord. I will be ending with the first principle by motivating you that even as you hear these words, these words are true and amen. You can sleep on these words. You can meditate on them. Listen to your inner being. What your inner being is telling you. You can also speak to God in this direction. That he will open your heart, your ear, your mind, all your sensitive parts. So as to hear him. So as to get to know his direction for your life. I believe if you do that, it is going to it is going a long way to help you in this pursuit. Knowing how or what you hold as giftings or your talent and how you can use it judiciously to get rewarded at the end. We can all do this because we have already been mandated. God in the creation account commanded man or humankind to what to be fruitful you are part of the humankind that was giving this command i am also part even as i am sharing this information i am aligning myself with my purpose so you also need to align yourself with your purpose get to know your purpose or get to know the number of talents you've been given the number of giftings you've been given and work with them god is going to reward you my name remains pastor richmond you can visit me by going to my website which is pastoramangpa.com god bless you god quicken your mortal body god quicken the spirit within it is the spirit of god that made you and i a living being this spirit at times speaks to you in a specific direction don't hesitate to be obedient tell the master to speak for you are ready to pursue his course i am ready to also assist you if there be the need you can just contact me i'm any here you will meet god willing the next day and then we will continue with responsibility god bless you and keep you amen